Thanks for joining us. And this is the first of a series we're going to be doing called State of the Arts. And I'm John Frazier from Career Services. And the purpose of this series is really to look at what's happening in the arts in the COVID-19 environment. We know that the arts have been hard hit and, and perhaps even disproportionately hit to, in comparison to even other industries. And so we've approached some great organizations to ask them, how are you navigating this? How are you developing resiliency? What things are working for you? What are the challenges? And also, and, and Jenny, who I'm going to introduce in a moment, actually put this idea on my radar, give credit where it's due, is what can students do to be resilient in this time? So uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Jenny Elliott from Aspen Music Festival and School. And so Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this today. Sure. Thanks for asking, John. I think it's yeah. really interesting. So I guess um, as a starting place, uh, why don't um, you tell us just a little bit about Aspen Music Festival yeah. and kind of your role there and, and what's going on at the moment? Sure. So, um, so Aspen Music Festival and School is, uh, um, we've been around for 75 years. Um, we are an eight week summer festival and in the summer we have 650 students that come in um, to learn classical music. Um, most of them are college age, our average age is 24. Usually they're um, just after undergrad, just before grad school or maybe after the first year of grad school. Um, they're coming from major conservatories all around the world. We're about 30% international. Um, they come to study with a preferred faculty member, and the faculty members either play in major orchestras around the world, or they teach in conservatories. And they all come together, and we have five different orchestras, um, in addition to an opera program, a composition program, um, and some chamber music. So they come... Um, for eight weeks and every week they have a position in an orchestra as well as private lessons with their teacher. Um, we have probably a 35% to 40% return rate of wow. students that come every year. So that's, that's amazing. <laughs> it is. It is. We're very lucky. And um, even though our average age, like I said, is 24, we do have some that come quite young. Um, and they can stay for many, many years. You know, we've had some that have been for sort of eight, nine years as mm -hmm. they, we watch them grow up. So that's fun so too. That, yeah, absolutely. So um, I've been with the organization for 22 years. Okay. Um, so I've been there for a long time. Um, by way of background, I'm a CPA. Um, I did auditing of nonprofits um, actually in Chicago before I moved out here. So the finance side is more my background, but um, now I'm in charge of sort of finance, HR, IT, facilities, kind of everything on the non-musical side of life. That's a big portfolio. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, of course, the COVID-19 situation has undoubtedly impacted your operations. What is the summer looking like for you at, at this moment in time? Well, um, at this moment in time, it changes constantly. Understood. I'll tell you that uh, our eight-week festival has shrunk down to a six-week festival. Okay. Um, we are supposed to have our first concert July 3rd. It's now July 16th. Um, that is obviously still kind of up in the air. Um, mm. We did that announcement, I think, three weeks ago to shrink the, the length of the festival. Um, our plan is that by May 1, we're going to go out and survey our constituents and all the students have, you know, the interesting thing is no one is yet coming out and saying they're not going to come. You know, we have okay. almost as many reservations for students right now as we normally would. Mm -hmm. All the faculty are on board. You know, the guest artists are still signed up. Um, but our plan is May 1 to go back to everyone and say, okay, you said you were coming. Are you really coming? Right. <laughs> um, all sorts of um, issues are popping up, obviously, over visas um, and travel restrictions. 
Mm -hmm. um, and we think that's going to even be more and more as places decide they're going to open up. They're going to say, we're happy to open up except for people from these areas. Yeah. Um, and considering the number of students we bring in from New York City, that could be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, between Manhattan School and Juilliard, it's a, it's a pretty big place for us. Mm -hmm. We're looking at that. Um, but right now, it's, it's kind of in a weird wait and see lull. Um, everyone here is getting ready to think about opening up. But even as they're talking about it on the state level and the county level, it is all, um, they're talking about three different stages of opening as they are mm -hmm. in many places. Um, and none of those stages would involve anything that is close to what we do. You know, we have to be, they have yeah. three stages and we're in stage four or five. <laughs> the um, stage they haven't even they haven't envisioned even thought about yet. Our stage yet. Right. So, um, you know, at the moment we're still sticking with the plan, but thinking about other options. Um, mm -hmm. The most complicated thing for us actually isn't necessarily the performance side of thing, it's the student side of things. Mm -hmm. As you, I'm sure, are aware, when you guys close down your dormitories, the thought of having that many kids in dormitories is, you know, that's scary. Absolutely. Sharing cafeterias, sharing bathrooms. And then just the whole point of being in an orchestra. You know, you're a wind player and you're sitting right next to someone else who's a wind player. Exactly. How does that work? So those are all still things we're thinking about. Um, and it's all still kind of up in the air. So at this point, it sounds like you're pretty confident that you've got a good game plan for the summer. Yep. What are, if I may ask, what are some contingencies you're thinking about if things don't flatten the way we're all hoping they will? Yep. So, you know, here, I think that the biggest question is going to be much more about um, if, if we get, if we do get state direction or county direction mm -hmm. or city direction, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a lot about tourists, you know, sure. Aspen is a tourist town. Mm -hmm. And so um, we actually started off pretty hot when it, this first started, we were the hottest place in Colorado. We had one pod of Australian visitors that like six of them got it like very early on. Um, but then we've, it's flattened a lot and we've done a really good job of um, flattening all that out. So the concept of bringing a bunch of tourists back into town, I think is really, um, that's going to be the crux for us. Um, and so, you know, it, we've talked about, um, you know, is delaying further an option. If we were at six weeks, do we think about four weeks? Um, would that really make that much of a difference? If, you know, if we're not allowed to yeah. do it in, in July 16th, do we really think we can do it on July 30th? Who knows? Um, you know, and then there's the, the question of, well, what if we wait till late August? And, you know, what if we just do some concerts and act mm -hmm. more as a presenter as opposed yeah. to educational? Um, and that's, an option and it's an attractive option because we could pull it together relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not students and faculty and, you know, all these summer staff that come, it would just be, you know, bring a quartet and get her done. But the other thing we need to think about is, um, as you can imagine, the average age of our audience is quite high. Mm -hmm. If the average age of, you know, the average classical music um, person in classical music going person in the United States is somewhere around 65. Mm -hmm. Ours is over 70. Really? Yeah. Ours is even older than the national average. So um, we've talked about that a lot. You know, is it possible that all the state agencies and things like that will say, you know, you can do it if you seat people every three seats or something like that? Would we, then at what point is it our responsibility to think about who are these people? Right. And is that a safe thing to do? Sure. Um, and so it's possible we could, we could get there where we just do some kinds of performances and that would be, you know, late August. So giving things even more time to settle out. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but the audience concerns are real. Sure. We, have, we have two performance venues. Um, one is a 500 seat hall, um, regular hall like inside. Um, and then we have a 2000 seat music tent, um, which is sort of, it's enclosed, um, but it is open air. We can open up all the sides and things. So it, it's bigger, feel a little better, I think, mm -hmm. if you're worried about these kinds of things. So it's an option to socially distance people in a big space like that. People can also sit on the lawn outside of the tent. Um, and so that's a possibility too. 
we've talked a lot about if we can't do anything, um, yeah. you know, everyone's popping up with all of their alternative online content. How do we feel about that? Um, and we, we feel pretty strongly that we're not going to do it just to do it. Um, our faculty members right now are reporting, you know, their year round institutions are trying to complete this, the, the year with zoom lessons yeah. and how unsatisfying that is. Um, it's really not something anyone's interested in for the summer. Um, and if most music students, if they want to continue with that, they can continue that with their year round teacher. Mm -hmm. They don't really need us to do that. So I don't think that's a way we would go. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, is it possible we will, you know, dive into the, you know, living rooms of some of our famous alumni and mm -hmm. do something like that that's fun? Yeah, that's possible. Um, and even we've talked about maybe even doing some master classes online. But it would be limited. Not, nothing yeah. like a full educational summer experience. It would just be um, keeping connections with donors and patrons and students. Yeah, well, the arts, you know, is such an immersive thing, you know, both for an audience member, but also for a performer, right? Yeah. There's, there's that real communal element to it. Yeah. And that makes, you know, of course, technology not the best That's tool right. for resolving it. You know, I've, I've seen some cool things, as you probably have as well, of artists sort of distance performing, bands doing that. And, and I don't know, my wife's flute choir can't really get the latency resolved in our little community. So, you yeah. know, I think for yeah. something like an orchestra, right, that's not, not possible and, yeah. and probably not satisfying. Probably not satisfying. I think, I yeah. think that's right. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's interesting, to, it's interesting to really hear about sort of the different lenses. You have to look at all of this through almost simultaneously to figure out sort of the, the spectrum of, of possibilities. Um, yeah. you know. so one of the things I was thinking about too, when I was, you know, thinking about, you know, how do we pivot and what, yeah. what do you look at? For us, I think it was much more about where we, where we started, right? When this first mm -hmm. came, you know, the first thing we did is we all sort of sat around and said, right. So, you know, where are we and what are we most worried about? Mm -hmm. And I think that we felt really fortunate that number one, our community, which is our donors and our students and our faculty are super committed. I mean, right. we're not worried about if we miss a summer, are we gonna lose our donors? Are we gonna lose our patrons? We're really not worried about that at all. Our donors and our patrons are very committed. Um, and so that's a, that's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, then you get to the point sort of, well, what's our mission and how does our mission apply to what's happening? Right. And we all just kind of looked at each other and said, you know, yes, it's true that, you know, music is what we need for our soul and things like that. And all those things are important, but the number one thing that's important right now is people's safety right? and people's health. And so, you know, once you get to that point, there is a, there is a point at which you're like, we just need to wait. We just need to wait and see what happens. And We've really been diving in with our community to talk to um, local businesses, restaurants, um, hotels. We are the summer economy in Aspen. And mm. so they're all waiting right now to see if we're going to exist. And if we don't, it's a really serious economic problem yeah. for them. So it's not just us in so many ways. Right. Um, and so I think that you know, the whole concept of pivoting is not necessarily just, you know, what you want and what we think would be best for us. We could probably think of a lot of ways to do something, right? right? Do something to make some money or something like that. Right. But it's really not what we're going for. You know, I think if, if we do anything at the end of summer, it's really going to be for the community. It's going to be more for the, t you know, the town and the valley where we live to keep people employed than it is maybe some great artistic endeavor. Um, we'll love that too. And, you know, I'll be super happy if I can hear some music this summer. Yeah, um, absolutely. but you know, you kind of get down to bare bones a little bit at a time mm -hmm. like this and think what's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. You said something uh, really interesting and, and something I certainly believe is true. And that's the impact of arts in a community. And it's, 
not exactly what we were said we were going to talk about, but I, I believe in being fluent in a conversation, right? And I think it's important for people to understand. It's been my observation that I think it's easy to undervalue the arts in a community from a funding perspective if you don't understand the true economic impact that the arts has on a community and how positive that impact really, really is. Yeah, I would say two things. I think that when we announced three weeks ago that we were going to delay by two weeks, mm -hmm. we got a lot of feedback that said, we really appreciate that you're still trying, that you're not mm -hmm. canceling right away. Because A, you know, I really need some arts in my life right now. And we really feel like this is what we need to recover emotionally and socially is to get together and be together. Um, you know, and then obviously from an economic standpoint, people were, they understood that. They're like, we really would love it if you could do something. Because they know that the second homeowners come into town, um, they eat at the restaurants, the hotels get filled up. When we have sold out concerts, the hotels are full and the restaurants are full. Right. So it's all a symbiotic situation. Yeah. Um, and there are other, you know, and other arts organizations in our town are the same. We have an uh, amazing theater group and a ballet. Mm -hmm. And they feel the same way. I mean, yeah. if, that if we're happening, there's going to be more patrons in town. And, you know, we just bounce off each other. Yeah. Um, and I, I do feel like we're very fortunate that our town understands the economic driver. We've also, well, we've laid that groundwork too. You know, sure. we've, yeah. we've done a lot of economic development studies to look at the summer visitor. Who are mm -hmm. they? What do they spend? Why are they here? Um, and they're here because of us and they spend twice as much of what a ski visitor spends. Interesting. Yep. They spend more and they stay longer. Wow. Yeah. That that is really cool to hear yeah. and also a little surprising, right? Yeah. I, I, it's not what I would have expected, but it, yeah. it's wonderful to hear it. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Is, it is good to hear it. So, but, you know, that also kind of goes back to, you know, being ready, you know, having those relationships in place with the city, right. um, with the hotels, with all the local people, city council, the board mm -hmm. of county commissioners, you know, we have communicated with them so much in the last month. And if we didn't have those relationships all set up and ready to go, I really think it, it would have been even more problematic for us mm -hmm. to really talk openly about what we need and why we need it. Um, they know what we need because they know our organization and they know why they want us to succeed because it's good for the town. Right. So. Yeah. Now that, it sounds like you have a really kind of special community in terms yeah. of just everybody trying to pull together and, and support you, which is wonderful to hear. Yeah. What's something you've, through this experience, you've learned either about yourself, you know, in your role or the organization has learned? Um, you know, I think that we've always felt strongly that we have a great staff. Mm -hmm. um, we get a very interesting sort of cross section of people here in that we get the real um, music geeks, if you will. Okay, you know? sure. They are really, that's just all they want to talk about and all they want to do. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, maybe they also like to, you know, climb 14,000 foot peaks. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, and so we get a, a really interesting cross section of people um, who not only love music, but they love the mountains. Um, and we have had a lot of. Um, all hands on deck kind of things happen. You know, we're all working remotely um, and not everything is happening in the normal course of business. And so it might be, um, we're really trying to not have anybody in the office except for maybe one person. Mm -hmm. And so if that one person is the person that's gonna be in the office, they just are gonna have to do everything. So if the artistic administrator is going to the office, you know what, he's gonna check the mail. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, he's, and so, um, and we've had a couple of people that have gotten sick. Um, not bad, nobody bad and Good. nobody serious, okay. but everyone is checking on them um, and talking to people and delivering food and really kind of um, you know, just being extra supportive, which isn't always the case in the workplace. And so we feel really fortunate with the staff that we have in place that we're kind of going through this together. There is, right, there is something communal about this experience because none of us are spared from the impact of it in right. terms of changes to our daily lives, right? right? 
And, and it is interesting to see, at least it's been my experience that, you know, I also am very fortunate to work with a team that I enjoy working with and they're, they're great colleagues. But you get deeper into the sort of the basic humanity of it, I think. And, yeah. and you realize our, our kind of human resiliency, which is yeah. really a, a really nice thing in a time of crisis. And it's not just because people's kids and animals jump in and out of the Zoom. Right. That's while fun. You're but... <laughs> while you're trying to meet. That happens right. too. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I'm surprised it hasn't happened already here. Yeah. I, I had to tell my whole family, I'm going to have a call with presentation. Like it's quiet time at two o'clock. So. <laughs> yeah. My cats don't listen to that. But, well, yeah. my, mine are old enough at this point. It, it's okay. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like you're doing really some great impactful thinking and and sorry i'm losing words apparently <laughs> but work to to sort of manage uh, this this really odd time and one of the things you had suggested and when we first talked it really stuck with me in fact it became part of the theme of the entire series mm -hmm. is this idea of what can students in the arts whether that's arts administration or performance yep. or you know tech what can they do to also pivot and be resilient in this time, whether they're, you know, sort of in college seeking internships or they're going into the workforce. Yep. Um, you know, I think kind of like what we're all doing is that flexibility is key. Um, and a lot of people, especially if they're in the arts, they have a goal and they've gone and they're getting their MFA or they're getting their undergraduate degree in the arts and then they want to do this kind of job and then this kind of job with the ultimate goal being this kind of job which I and I respect that sure um but this is going to be a time for flexibility mm -hmm. um you know this is going to be a time for you know what can I do to get any kind of experience what can I do to help my community what can I do to help the art form even if that's possible in the short term um and so I really think that students are going to have to open up a little bit more than maybe they would normally um, because the plan might not be possible. Um, and we've even talked to some of our summer staff that are, that mm -hmm. are coming back um, in the, Oh, you know, you, you were, you were hired to be um, on stage crew. Um, we've already had one of the percussion crew say they can't come. How do you feel mm -hmm. about moving percussion at this? You know, how do you feel about doing both? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you're going to be an operations assistant. We think we're going to be short a receptionist. Will you split your time half and half? And, you know, and people have been great. And people have been stepping up and saying mm -hmm. that, you know, whatever it takes. But I, I think that, um, and I also think that in that flexibility, it's so valuable to have those different experiences. I mean, yes. even if what you really wanted to do was to be the electrician on the opera set, um, which is a great job. You know, if we pull you in to run titles for the opera, mm -hmm. that's only that, that's a great learning experience too. Um, and with all the arts being constantly underfunded, the more you know, the more valuable you are. So yes. even if it maybe it wasn't your master plan, mm -hmm. um, I really feel like this might be a time and a time period where people maybe learn things they hadn't planned on, maybe mm -hmm. aren't, or didn't think they were interested in. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's service in the long run. Yeah. I would even stretch that to for profit. I feel okay. like, um, a lot of people who decide early on in their career that they're just super interested in nonprofits, super interested in the arts. There's a lot to be learned in a good for profit job, you know, and sure. if that's where life takes you for a period of time, because the economy is not such the arts are hiring, you know, go work at a you know, office, go work in a consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And you can learn a lot of things that way that are transferable. So, you know, don't see that as a, as a fail, if you will. Right. And I, I, I appreciate you saying that and, and saying it in that way, because I think sometimes when anybody's been in a, in a course of study and you have a certain mindset of here's where my life is going, when it takes a turn unexpectedly and, and maybe for a reason that's not in your control. I think it is easy to feel like, Oh, I failed in some way when often that's most definitely not the case. Yeah. And those things you learn from having to have made that turn. So inform you for future 
decisions and, and, and sometimes open up, as you said, sort of unexpected pathways and yeah. opportunities. So. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, in, when you're interviewing someone for a job, um, I get most excited when people come in and say what else they can do. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw your job posting. I can do all of these things. Here's some other things I can do. You know, maybe, maybe you also need help with X, Y, and Z. I can paint your opera set as well as being your electrician. And I'm really good at that too. Like there's no reason not to sort of think past what people are asking for and offer more. Um, and this is exactly the right time to do that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Do you, you guys, do you yeah. place students in internships for the summer or is that something, how does that work? Well, it place, placement probably isn't how we describe it, but we definitely work with students in finding them. And so a lot of what we're doing is uh, teaching, skill building, uh, resor providing resources, and coaching is how I would frame it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we do work with a lot of students in both internships and, and job, you know, jobs mm -hmm. that they're hoping to obtain. What's yeah. interesting is a lot of conversations I've had with students recently have really touched on this concept of, okay, this is an unexpected period of time. When we get through it, I think one of the questions that this cohort will be asked is, what did you do? Yes. You know, how did you navigate it? How did you demonstrate resiliency? And, and also, I think, how did you contribute to your community during this time? Yep, I think that's and very I, true. Yeah, and I think the students that can say, this is where I thought I was going, and this is where I ended up, and this is how I navigated to get there, are, are going to ultimately long-term have a, an advantage, you know, and, and be more valuable as employees. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, yeah. This is sort of a side note, but sure. I was on a call with um, our attorney this morning, and I asked her, I said, so, and she focuses on tax exempt entities, a little bit of tax okay. work, but sure. said, so what, what are people canceling contracts? Like, what are you doing? What, what's the work? Yeah. And she said, you know, there's a, there's tax work um, for people who are trying to give benefits to their employees in the most tax exempt, you know, tax positive manner they can. And we're talking to them about that. They have a lot of um, medical institutions who have all sorts of stuff going on. And she said, but, and you'd also be surprised at the number of applications we're taking in for people who want to start new nonprofits. Oh, interesting. To serve the community, um, you know, to work on relief efforts, to raise mm -hmm. money for research, um, all COVID related. She said they did a dozen last week. That's amazing. And I said, you know, and you feel like everyone's hiding in their basement, but they're really not. Yeah, you know, they're still out there. They're still trying to be productive. They're still trying to change the world, which I think is great. I do too. Yeah. That, that, that's really, really awesome. And yeah. And I think it, moments like this challenge us to think about how do we how do we still do things that are important to do, but in different ways. You know, no, I agree, and I, I like what you said that I I do agree with this generation as they move into the workforce mm -hmm. and into life. There's going to be questions. You know, what what did you do? Right. How did you handle it? How, how did you handle your life? Yeah. yeah. That's very Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to uh, open it up for any questions. Uh, I'm enjoying our conversation, but I want to, make sure, want to make sure we also provide room for other voices. Are there, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, please. Do you think what's happening now is going to affect how you do anything with the festival long-term? Like, mm -hmm. will what's happened to this summer change how you do the, the festival in coming years at all? Yeah. Great question. Um, it's a great question and something we've been talking about a lot. You know, I think that a month ago it was all about, well, gosh, we just have to get through till, you know, by August life will be life again. Right. And I don't think we feel like that anymore. And I think a lot of people are getting to that place too. Um, you know, as far as, you know, will we, what will we change? Um, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't know that we're, that we're there yet. Um, you know, what you see in the news um, as far as both uh, like antibody tests and vaccines, hopefully someday, you know, is it possible that in a year, if you wanted to apply to the Aspen Music Festival in school, you'd need to show proof of one or the other? I think that's very possible. Um, but I think that's, you know, I think that's possible in a lot of places in our life. 
um, yeah. that that'll, you know, that's probably the way that we're going to get life back to normal is that you're going to be one or the other. You're either going to be vaccinated or you're going to be able to prove antibodies. Um, and so that wouldn't surprise me. You know, I'm hoping the answer is that we have to rethink an orchestra. Um, oh, yeah. I really don't want that to be the answer. So at the moment, I'm hoping um, that there, you know, I think by next summer, there will be something that we're going to need to do to keep people safe. But I think the status of the vaccine and the antibody test is going to be, that's going to tell us how hard or easy that's going to be. If it so happens that the festival becomes concerts like late in August and that's it, um, how will you, like, I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with the students, but how, beyond that, what will you do to keep their spirit? Like, how will you make them feel as though they've done something productive yeah. um, without, cause, uh, cause obviously you can't have that face-to-face -face thing. So how, I don't know, I guess what is, what do you think is the best avenue to make, um, to keep their morale up and keep them feeling like they're doing something meaningful? Yeah. So one of the things we've been talking about is, um, is deferring enrollment. Um, and so, you know, usually you, you have to, no matter how many years you've been here and how amazing you think you are, you have to apply every year, which means you have to do a live, you have to do an audition and you have to have be accepted by your teacher. Um, and we're going to let students defer until next year, um, and not have to reapply. And one of the goals is exactly what you were asking, which is we can then spend a year trying to keep them engaged um, when some things, you know, if they don't have the summer that they wanted, um, what can we do throughout the year to keep them engaged? And that'll probably be, um, it'll be, you know, virtual content, if you will, but it would be just for students and it would be with faculty. Um, you know, how can we get, you know, the flute studio together um, to talk about a project that the head of the flute department, you know, just worked on and doing that kind of thing. Um, it wouldn't be content that would be for donors and patrons in the world. It would really just be small groups um, trying to stay together and communicating in that way. Um, and for one sort of difficult thing for us is we are kicking off a new opera program this summer um, run by Renee Fleming and this was the first year. Um, we've had an opera program forever, but um, it was all getting revamped um, and Renee was running it. And, um, and so it's, so now it's a question of if it doesn't happen, are we sort of delaying the first season or you know, how are we gonna deal with that? So that, that's been a little bit of a bummer for all of us. We've been working on the launch with her for a couple of years now, so. Um, that is another one where I have a feeling what we'll do is the people who have won these um, Fleming internships, Fleming fellows, um, we'll keep them and keep them engaged and hope that they then come again next year. Any other okay, questions? I have, a, I have like one more question. Yeah, sure, of course, please. Um, so I know that you mentioned that Aspen is a tourist town and that you are like the summer business. So how much do you weigh, I mean, obviously safety is, is or it, it, you know, you can't really weigh that, but how much do you take into the, it take into account the economic safety of the town and also the festival? And then how much does that weigh into, like, I don't know how to phrase this question. How far can you push keeping the festival on and keeping people safe, um, how many adjustments can you make to keep it running yeah. while keeping everybody safe? I don't know if that's, that makes sense. Um, no, it does. Yeah. I think that, um, I mean, the first thing I would say is a conversation we had early on, you know, as it became clear who was gonna make decisions around here in the, in the county and the city. Um, you know, they set up, they have an incident command team who works with public health and so we started talking about how do we interact with these people and at what point do we talk to them about what we think we can do we think we can 
sterilize the tent every three hours. We think we can, and we actually decided not to do that. We decided very specifically, we did not want to lobby this group. We didn't want to tell them what we could do in order to have a festival. Um, we're waiting for them to talk about some of the baseline things. If they think they're ready to have tourists in town, if they think, you know, we don't need social distancing anymore, then I feel like we will go to them and say, okay, like let's get some public health people together and talk about what we can do to make this work. Um, but as far as how far do we push it to have a festival, to drive that economic engine, we've really decided that we're letting safety take the lead. And when safety says it might be possible, then we'll get in there and we'll say, here's the 10 steps that we think we can take to keep people safe. How do you feel about that? But we are not going to them regularly and saying, oh, we've, ju we've adjusted again. We think you can take tourists. So because yeah. of X, Y, and Z, we're not doing it. Is that your cat? That is. So this is one <laughs> of our cats. This is Bowie. Hi. <laughs> and uh, he has to be in on the act, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Matisse, that makes sense? Yeah, oh, it totally makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it really stresses how collaborative all of this really has to be, yeah. you know, and how many moving parts are in a community. So question I have, um, and this is just more related because I think there will definitely be students who will watch this and they're going to get a lot out of it. It's been an amazing yeah, so. conversation. Um, and I suspect one of the things I'll be asked is if someone wants to get involved working with you, whether, I mean, so I know for performance, there's an audition process and being yeah. accepted to the school, but if someone's interested in being involved as a staff member, yeah. What's the process? Yep. So depending on the department, um, mm -hmm. things usually start to go live middle of December where we're taking applications and definitely by middle of January, everything's up. And so on our website, askingmusicfestival.com, there's an employment page. Um, and every, like I said, everything, everything's up by the middle of January. Um, some of the more specific technical jobs are in December, and that would be more in our upper department, really. Okay. Um, but everything else, January. And then um, there's an interview process for some jobs. It's a group interview, depending on the job. Um, and, you know, in the, the variety of types of things we have, um, you know, we have half a dozen music librarians, orchestra managers. Wow. That's great. You know, we have office interns. We have, you know, um, oh, multiple stage crews. Um, we have multiple sets of people who just move pianos around. We rent 165 pianos every summer. And wow. so they have to get moved from here to there. So then we also have a whole crew of piano tuners mm -hmm. that we hire every summer. Um, we hire a bunch of accompanists every summer in addition to the faculty. Uh, then, you know, we have sort of standard office ones in development, marketing. Um, we have a scheduler who just schedules practice rooms, and rehearsal spaces and things like that. Um, yeah, so there's a, anything, anything you might want to do. We probably. Clearly. Have, yeah. <laughs> right? it's, a, um, it's a super intense summer mm -hmm. um, in a good way, I think. But right. it's, it's a lot. Um, they're usually here for, it's like I said, our festival's eight weeks. Summer staff are usually here for 10. Um, we house them. We pay them, sort of, you know, as best we can. Of course, yeah. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a really, really great experience. Um, and then I should have said also on the opera side, and <laughs> everything you can think of from sets to costumes to titles, mm -hmm. all of it. So Sounds like do, an incredible summer. We do two fully staged operas and then mm -hmm. one semi-staged every year. Wow. So it's, it's 400 performances in eight weeks. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. I know. I know. <laughs> but that could just be, you know, someone on their piano in a church and it's free and you just go. So they're not yeah. all, right. you know, they're not all a huge deal, but yeah, it's a lot. That's still a lot, right. It's still a lot of performances. It's still a lot. That's yeah. amazing. That's really yeah. amazing and inspirational. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. So any, um, any sort of 
parting advice for folks? Um, no, I think, you know, I think from the student side, I think the mm -hmm. be flexible is probably what I would, yeah. you know, hang my hat on most. And then I would also say that when it's not, if it's not going to pan out that you can't do what you want to do, you know, think like what we were saying is, you know, then you just need to think about what's best for the community and what's best for you. And it might not be, you know, working at an art museum like you really wanted, but there's probably something meaningful you can figure out. Um, that'll, you know, be right for you and make you happy and you'll definitely learn something along the way. So I think it, you know, everyone's digging deep a little bit right now. That's right. Absolutely. So, and, and like we said, there, there may be some gifts in there, which is awesome. I think so too. Yeah. Cool. I think so too. Well, I want to thank you so very, very much for doing this with, uh, with us today. Sure. Um, it was fun. I think so too. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, right. and I want to wish you really all the best as, as you're kind of navigating this environment. I will undoubtedly at some point drop you a note just to check in, hear how it's going. And, yeah. and fingers you. crossed that the shortened season comes off for you. I hope so. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Thanks.